as I mentioned in previous lectures, you don't need to follow the exact steps that I do. Use your common sense to draw the figure and keep refining it until you are satisfied with it. And of course, you will rarely achieve uh, the perfect drawing from the first time. So in this lecture, I'll use a simple approach so that, so that you can follow up with me. I might skip uh, some steps in case they are repeated. And if you have any question, please ask me in the Q&A section. So let's start. Let's change the units to centimeters. And press OK. Now create the different layers that we're going to use. We have five different layers, one for the boundaries, one for the dimensions, one for the reinforcement, one for the stirrups, and another one for the text. Of course, you can create more layers to add more details, or you can use less number of layers. But I want to represent them decently, so I will use five layers. To create a layer, go to Layer Properties, create a new layer. The first layer is Boundaries. Change the color of the layer. Let's uh, choose this color. Press on OK. Do the same for the other layers, but you choose different colors. So now the, we have the five different layers that we're going to use. One for the boundary, dimension, reinforcement, stirrups, and the finally the text. And of course we have different colors for each one of them. Now we need to create the different dimension styles that we're going to use. As we mentioned in the instructions, we have two scales. The first one is the horizontal scale, which is 1 to 100. So we don't need to change anything in the, di in the dimensions or the multiplications of the dimension. The other uh, scale is the vertical scale, which is 1 to 50. So we need to multiply each dimension in the vertical uh, direction by 0 0.5. So let's create the two dimension styles. To create dimension style, go to annotation, dimension, and then go to manage dimension styles. Press on a new. The first one is horizontal scale, one to 100. And we take the properties from the standard dimension style and we go to continue. Let's adjust tab by tab. So let's go to lines. So let's change the style according to what we saw in the figure. As you remember, the extension lines, which are these lines, were dotted. So let's change them to dotted. We go to line type extension line 1. We go to other. We load in new extension lines and we go to dotted. Let's choose the dotted 2. And we press and OK. We choose it here again and we press on OK. The extension, the second extension line is also dotted. So the two extension lines will appear to be dotted in the drawing. In case you want to remove the extension line, we suppress them. We press here, as you can see, I removed one and I can also suppress the other one. I remove both of them. You can play with the properties of the dimensions in case you want to adjust something for other drawings in the future. Go to the Symbols and Arrows tab. Instead of the arrow here, I prefer to put a tick, architecture tick. It's nicer. And let's put the arrow size to be 5 cm, meaning the tick. Of course, the uh, representation appears to be awkward now, but we will adjust the text and you will see how. Go to the text tab and let's set the text height to be 10 cm. As you remember, the tick size is 5 cm, but this one will be 10 cm and you will see how it will appear. So this is 10 cm, the height of the text, and this one is 5 cm. So it's pretty decent. Also, let's place the text above the the dimension line so the vertical placement let's put it above and let's make the dimension the text of the dimension to be aligned with the dimension that we want so let's make it aligned as you can see the alignment has changed now go to the fit tab 
and in the, the labeling and the representation of the dimensions I want to keep the text and the extension lines so as you can see it is showing both of them the extension lines and the text and now if we press on this it will suppress the arrows meaning removing the text the tick the architecture tick in case the text does not fit so yes I want to do this option now go to the most important tab the primary units tab keep the unit format to decimal the precision let's reduce the precision you can uh, choose the precision to be one digit or zero digits since we don't have any decimal points uh, in this drawing let's choose it to zero decimal points this option is important in case for example you want to to do uh, dimensions for a beam of or the depth of the beam to be an increment of five centimeter to be represented in an increment of five centimeter you can pre type here five centimeter so of, uh, for example if the dimension is 22 centimeter it will round off to the nearest uh, increment of five centimeters so it will be 20 so th th this this option comes in handy uh, in many cases in uh, dimensions of beams or other structures and as when we mentioned before that the horizontal di the horizontal scale is 1 to 100 and we said that we're gonna use this scale the horizontal scale 1 to 100 to be the default scale so we don't multiply the dimensions by any factor so we give them the scale factor to be 1 but of course we will adjust the vertical scale now of course you can play with the other options in case you want the alternate uh, the alternate units and the tolerances in case uh, you need that but in this drawing we don't need that so I press on OK now let's create the vertical scale let's copy the properties from the horizontal scale but we will adjust one option so uh, select the horizontal scale and create new scale and say we have vertical dimension style vertical scale 1 to 50 so each one centimeter will be representing 50 centimeter in real life and press and continue we need to change only the scale factor as I said in the previous lecture explaining the scale factor I said that I will multiply each uh, dimension vertical dimension by 0 0.5 so the scale factor is 0 0.5 and it's under the primary unit tabs so we are done with the dimension style we go to close and now we are ready to start the drawing 